Hey guys, what's up? CT in Darren's garage. You guys ready to finish this engine? We're gonna get it done today. Let's do it. Ran into a little issues, you know, left cam out. <laughs> Studs were a little too long, but <laughs> we're moving on and we were uh, gonna get this thing running today. So. Hell yeah, let's do it, man. CT's gonna build this side. All right, so what are we getting into here, Darren? You're gonna be uh, putting the piston cylinders on first. We're gonna put some sealer on those and we'll install that. And then uh, have our push rod tubes, our deflector plate. Basically, you're gonna bolt the side of the motor up and then we'll work together on putting the sheet metal and the drive gear and the rest of the components on to make it run. Okay, so, cool. But I want you to bolt this side together so you're familiar with it and you have an idea of what's going on here. We have everything laid out. We've got our studs shortened up now. Everything's ready to go. Awesome. So, so cool. we should be able to get this up and running today, hopefully. We should be able to. As long as there's no major... Uh... Of course, I thought we were going to get it running last time, but, you know, it's not always like you plan. Right. We, we want the end result to be good, so... All right. So reach under here with one hand and hold that rod up. Now slide your jug over this, the studs. Slide it on in there. Get it in there. There you go. Now you're trying to line this pin up with the bushing there. And then just push it through once you get everything lined up. Get my glasses on. All right. Let me help you. This is a little tricky. It's a little tricky because these rods are so short on a 40 horse. So when I put these in, I like to grab them, turn them like this to make sure they're in the clip. Or yep. The groove. I'll just move it a little bit. Just make sure it's in the groove there. Yeah, it'll, it'll go back and forth real smooth if it is. And if it isn't, it'll pop out. Yep. So yeah, I got a pretty good shot of that in the last got video. got clips on there. Go ahead and slide that in now. Push it in. Don't touch that. Just push it in. Just push right here. Yes, sir. Okay. And you're lining so it up. both clips are on both sides. Yes. Mm -hmm. Got our sealer on. Sealer's on and just push, push it on down. Square it up and push it down. There you go. That's good. Hold it for a minute. All right. Good. And we're ready for our next job. Awesome. You want to try to do that one? Yeah. All right. It's a uh, same process. Let me put a little leave on that pin there. So you got a clip on this side already. Yep, that's the flat side. I do that because it's easier to, uh, when you assemble the jug like this, you have to put this one in. You know, you can get to the one on the outside, but obviously you can't get in here. Right. So, a little dragon blood in there. Okay. And uh, you slide it in on the studs, and then you're lining your pin up with your bushing up right there. And push it in. Take your time, it's a little, you know, you'll feel the pin get into the rod and it'll slide right in. I think you got it there. Now just push it in. Mm -hmm. And we'll have to tap it at the end there. I'll come over and tap it for you. Okay, cool. Tap that in. So there's a flat side on this? Yeah, this one's sort of round, but you can see this side's got a flat edge. And, and the flat you, side goes you out? You want that out so it's locked into the piston and the pin's pushing on this part. Okay. Grab it and you know, move it in the groove. Get it in there, move it around? Yep. So okay. Go ahead and push that baby home. You hold the motor down because this stand's not as nice as, as your stand. in the hole. All right. Nice. Now grab the plate. 
right is next. This is right there. And we'll shape this a little bit. It locks in. So this goes under here. It's the flex of air. The air comes down from the fan and hits this, and it cools the bottom of the jugs. Yep. And if you leave this off, the jugs don't cool. The air blows right through them, and they'll overheat. Gotcha. So this is very critical. I don't want to leave these off. And there's two sides. There's one. Looks like there's a bigger side and a small side goes in. Okay. Big side goes out, just like that. Nice. So go ahead and place the head on the studs. Let's go ahead and get it started on there. Well, let's put a little sealer on those O rings real quick. I like to put a little bit of sealer on here. It's been on there nice now, huh? Never know they were hard to get on there. <laughs> yeah, those were tough. Yeah. Are those just on the 40 horse? Yeah, this is a 40 horse thing. All right, now you're ready to go ahead and put the head up there. All right, get the head on. Yep. Awesome. That's how it goes. Pop it on there. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful thing. All right. Go ahead and push it up a little further. Okay. All right, now we need push rod tubes behind you. Let that sit right there. All right, seams always go up on these. You have where it's laser welded there. Yep. You want those at the top. Okay. Okay. By the way, these are super sweet. Uh, 40 horse push rod tubes. They're shorter than a 1600. And uh, he got these at Wolfburg, Wolfburg West and they're super nice. Yeah, they are nice. So uh, it's really cool to get the actual proper tube. So the way we put these in, so I like to pull the head out a little bit like this. Okay. So I use the, the cylinder head and the block sort of to hold it in place. I'll take two hands, put these in my pocket. Seam up, of course. Get it in there. Get out. Just hold it just like that. And go to the next All one. right, so the seam, this part here, yep. goes up. Yep. Okay. Just in case it leaks for some reason. Yeah, you know, sometimes they can leak from there. Uh, and it's just a good practice to put the seam at the top. There you go. Okay, so you can look over here and see all the seams. Just line those up, you know, turn them. Get all the seams at the top. They all at the top. You can look through right here and see them. Yep. So that's what I usually look through there. And I'll just put the head on like that, and then I'll line them all up, make sure they're all straight. Yeah, I can see the seam. Okay. Cool. All right. So now, you know, we want to look at everything. We got our deflector plate on there. We got all our push rod tubes in place, and we're ready to go for the uh, cylinder head hardware next. All right, I got these four up top. Okay, put, put the other ones on. And then I got these here. One more to go. One more here. All right. All right. Hand me two of the nuts over there. I usually start like when you have the studs have been shortened. You know, it's a good practice to go ahead and grab these first. Okay. So the washers don't fall off and go down the push rod tubes. Gotcha. And two more nuts. And we can start putting them on the top up there. Okay. And we need to push this head in a little bit more too, right? Well, I'll go down, put the bolts on.
Okay. Got those all on. All on. All right, we're gonna tighten it down. I like to watch the tubes, make sure they don't get pinched. Everything looks good under there. Start in the middle. Uh, here's the outside. <laughs> Somebody will send you a snowblower. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's cold for Florida. Yeah. We need a couple really cold days to get rid of some of these mosquitoes. Oh, no, man. That's terrible. It's a national bird down here. So you're just getting it snugged up, and then we'll go. And you're going to go over it with pork and Pork it. Yeah. Awesome. I'm going to go ahead and torque the heads one more time. So I'm just okay. taking this off so you can, you know, torque it, both heads. But I just put this in to make sure we cleared the studs and we were going to be able to adjust the valves and gotcha. weren't going to have any more surprises. So everything looks good. So you just put this rocker arm on just to check? Yeah. Just so you got to pull it back off to just torque get everything, a, right? get a reference. We're going to retorque everything together and then we'll adjust the valves together. Okay. So... We go ahead and get your torque wrench and we'll start on the uh, side that you just put the head on over there. Okay. And we're gonna go ahead and torque the heads now. Okay. So we're gonna start here. All right, either uh, one of these? Yep, just start snugging them down. Don't torque them, just you're, like the rod bolts, you know, you're gotcha. gonna ease the head down. Just like that? Yep. Here? We'll tighten it a little more than that. Okay. There you go, go to the next one, over here. All right. All right, go down here now. Okay. All right. Come over here. I'll go over here. All right, and go over there. Over here. Back over in that corner. And then the centers. Keep going. Here? Oh, in the centers. Oh, in the centers? Yep. There you go. Go ahead. Keep going? Yep. All okay. right, up here. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, here. Back in that corner over there. Over here. Over there. And the centers one more time. Here. Okay. All right, now we're gonna go to this side. All right, we're gonna bump it up a couple pounds here. So that was at 25? 25, now we're gonna go to 27. See, it's on the line down there. Yep. Zero. Now we're going to go. So that's 25. One. 1.5. Yeah. Two. That's 27. Yep. Gotcha. All right. Go back to the other side over there and start in the center and do your crisscross pattern. two o-rings on those two studs over there the rocker studs the new o-rings this side already has the new o-rings so the original ones that were like a brass or no those no are... they're white okay they're just dirty gotcha so this is the old one the new one all right then this goes over to studs here on the head yep just sits down in that little groove there and that's what the uh, rockers sit on? Yes, sir. Keeps the uh, oil coming out the back of the stud. Okay. All right. Now, uh, 
Let me grab those push rods next and put a little oil in them. Let me tighten this down. I'll be right around there. All right. Get our uh, push rods here. Get this O-ring out of here. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't think so. <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> So we got our push rods in there, we got our head all torqued on, got our valve springs all on the correct way. Yep. Got a valve job. Somebody had asked about the crank. We did not turn the crank, we just measured it. And uh, it was turned 10 thousandths, but had standard bearings on it. So we corrected that. Uh, polished the crank up and uh, polished the rods and put all new bearings in her, honed the cylinders. And that's what got us to this point right now. So, yeah, the uh, the rods and the crank look amazing. So we, you know, a lot of it's cleaning, which anybody can do. You just take your time, clean the parts up, and you'll have a really good motor. The cleaner the motor, the better it'll last. So we'll give it a little slant there. I put a little assembly lube on the uh, tips there. We'll slide that in. About out of dragon blood. Oh boy. Gonna have to get more for your sixteen iron. <laughs> hey, I'm ready. Gotta make that gear run. Yeah, Maybe that get a daily driver. That would be fun. Yep. This will be a little 1600 like the bus has. It'll be baking with baking powder. <laughs> <laughs> put a little bit on this adjusters. Just a smidge for startup. And I like to put a little squirt down in these blocks. What brand is that? That's uh, Permatex, right? Permatex, Ultra Slick. Ultra Slick. Dragon's Blood. Dragon Blood. That's what I call it, Dragon Blood. Now I just get all these started by hand, like so. And then you push the rocker on like that. And you want to make sure all these are in the cups. Or you'll bend the push rod very easily. Gotcha. And then we'll have to uh, check and make sure that our push rods are clear of the tubes. They look to be very close there. So we might have to bend the tubes a little bit. We'll address that when we get to it. Yeah, that, that one seems like it's right on the tube, huh? Yeah. What causes that? It's just... Just the machine work on the uh, parts. Gotcha. You know. Moose probably, these tubes are quite a bit, you know. I guess everything's just smaller on a 40 horse. Yeah. So we'll make a room for them. I know these are torqued to 18 foot pounds. I usually just tighten them by hand because you know, I'm pretty good at 18 foot pounds, but we can go ahead and torque them if you like. Yeah. You just know, you've, you've done it so many times, you can feel it. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to tighten these too tight because what happens is you'll smash these blocks and it'll keep the rocker shaft, you know, it'll bind everything up, so. Definitely not somewhere that it has to be extra tight. On the performance stuff, sometimes we'll use a uh, eight millimeter head nut there. It's a 15 millimeter nut instead of a 13. So yeah, can we talk about that a little bit? You've, you've worked on a lot of performance engines over the years. Mm -hmm. What are some of the most popular performance engines? When I was younger, the most popular motor would be like, you know, 82 by 94 was about as big as you can go. But now they've made cranks available to everybody. Right. And, uh, you can build a pretty decent sized motor with an aluminum case. They come pre-clearance, so it's pretty easy to assemble everything. Like what is this one right here? That's a 2210. It's an 82 by 90 and a half. Wow. And uh, we built that on video. There was quite a bit of hand clearancing the camshaft and stuff on that. Uh, if I had to do it again, I'd order the camshaft turned down. CB can actually turn the cam down, mm -hmm. make the diameter smaller, so the rod clears through it. Yep. 
Uh, if you don't want to deal with the rod clearancing issue, you know, you stick to like a 74 or 78 millimeter crank. Yep. And you can pretty much bolt that together and uh, build a nice little stroker. We just built this uh, 78 by 94 motor over here. Did that on video. And that one went together pretty good. That was an early aluminum case. It wasn't clearance for uh, a stroker crank, so there was a little bit of clearancing involved. But if you order a case, you can uh, pretty much build a decent motor now, uh, right off the shelf parts. CB Performance is a good source, uh, A and A. You uh, can pick your supplier. You just have to keep in mind, you know, if you're going to make a lot of power, you're probably going to need a little better parts. If you just want a mild street car, those parts are far, you know, they'll do the job. Yeah, I mean, th these are like race engines, right? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to drag race it, you're going to have to step up to different parts, you know. Yeah. Uh, stuff that's not so much available. Those aren't really daily driver engines right there. No, like this, the turbo motor right there is a good example. You know, they're, they're similar in size, but the parts are a lot different quality of the parts right so this this has a, a empty crank in it where the race motor has a scat billet crank and uh, you know if you're building a street motor and you only want to make 160 150 horsepower which is a lot of power you know you can get away with the parts that are available now if you're going to drag race it you're probably going to want to call scat and maybe get some good rods and uh, design your motor for the higher rpm some of the race stuff we turn like 10,000 RPM, so the parts have to be really good. But on the street stuff, we try to keep it about 6,500. Gotcha. Plus, they hold up pretty well. That's cool. So. And this is your bug. You've raced it many, many times over the years. Yeah, I had that. Got it when I worked at Scooters. Uh, probably the beginning pictures would be the white ones over there. It was white first. It was primer first. Yeah. And then I painted it white. And then it got painted this burgundy color over here. Yep. Recently it was painted with the flames. And now it's waiting for another paint job, a new identity. <laughs> <laughs> You've had it a long time. Yep, I've had it. It was my first car. So wow, that's pretty I cool. I drove to college, Carson Newman, Tennessee, drove back. That's really cool. Yeah. Very cool. A lot of history there. Got it from Rick, Rick Morrow down at Scooter Shop. He was building a race car and he bought it for a parts car. And uh, I got the leftovers. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. <laughs> yeah, just go ahead and torque it up. Yeah, I've torqued the two rocker nuts. The rocker nuts, okay. Yeah. And, we, and we're set to 18? Yes, sir. Okay. You're pretty much right on already. Yeah. Okay, just go back and forth a couple yeah, times. Check it twice, you know. 18 foot pounds. That's pretty much the standard for these. That's the factory uh, setting. Uh, you can. Refer to this book. This is the book I like to use. Everybody asks me what books I use. And I like the uh, Without Guesswork Manuals from Volkswagen. It's probably similar to the service manual you have. You can go online and look at these. And you type in your year car. And these have all the specs for your car from, uh, you know, the crankshaft measurements, ring and pinion, backlash. Uh, any kind of measurement that's in the car is in this book. Oh, that's cool. Uh, torque, specs, anything. And these are all factory setups. So, you know, it's a, it's a good resource. It's awesome. So uh, there's not a lot of pictures, as you can see, but there's a lot of information. So. A lot of technical data. Yeah. Well, yeah, anything you want to know. Uh, Samba is a great source. They, they have all these published on there. Yep. So that's a good place to look for that kind of information. All right, you're right on there. Boom. All right. So now we're at the point where we're going to start putting all your accessories and stuff on. Okay. So we'll start with the uh, J-Tubes, I guess, first. Need that, uh, start with the J-Tubes? Yeah, you have an exhaust uh, kit Kit over there. A yeah. hole might need to be drilled. Like that. Is it, did it go on? Yeah. Yep. I have all the nuts we need in it. Yeah, I got this from Wolfsburg, too. Got baby out the right whole here. kit. No washer. No washer. You got the gasket there. Put the gasket on there. Goes dry or metal. Do these nuts go on either way? Either way. It's just a standard nut. 
There's your 13 inch right here. Snug them, but uh, don't tighten them. Just get them drawn down because we're going to want to put our muffler on and line that up. So, let me go ahead and start assembling these. Get a box of this. Mm. All right, so we went, we're going with the uh, J tubes. We're getting rid of the heater boxes because we don't really need heat down here in Florida. Uh, a couple days a year, maybe. You know, so we've deleted the heater boxes. Got the J tubes. Getting these on here. This one's a little tight. The thread's a little rusty. A little rusty? Yeah. I'll, I'll move in and clean it up. Might be able to just get it started. It'll be fine. Yeah, I got it. Now. I put a new stud in one of these. Yeah, I know there was a stud missing. We fixed it. Was this a 13? Yes, sir. There we go. Yeah, I've got the original heater boxes. I was going to cl clean them up and restore them. And yeah, well, that'd be a good project. I'd yeah. Put them on later if you want. Yeah, I might do that. Remember, don't tighten those. Okay. Just loosen that up. All right, keep those loose. Yeah, you want to loosen it until we get the muffler installed. So it'll okay. make everything easier to fit. Gotcha. We're in a little wiggle room. Okay. A little wiggle room. Stuff here. You want to show this magic? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> magic touch. Yeah. Sometimes the hammer is your friend. Oh, hand me my gasket down there. Where does it go? Right on the J tube. Right here? Mm -hmm. Okay. Twos, a little fire come out of there. No. <laughs> yeah, quickest way to burn up. Nice. Yeah, it's not nice. It's tight. It's a tight fit. Good and tight. Good and tight. They call it good and tight. <laughs> well, this is a. Uh, the original motor, the original muffler is a stale air. Yeah. Or fresh air. It's basically the same. The only difference is it has this little adapter plate. Yeah, man. I found this on the Samba. The guy was out of Texas. I think I paid 70 bucks for it. He probably sold it to you because it didn't fit. You didn't know you could adjust it with a hammer. Ah. Yeah, it was cheap because most people want 200 bucks for them. I got it for... He's going to be mad when he sees this video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> None of them used to fit back in the day. I, when I first started using the Volkswagen, we used to get them from Walker, and they were really nice. But, you know, like anything... Was Walker out of... As the years go on, the quality declines, it seems like, you know? Yep. You get the old new stock stuff that didn't fit that people are okay with now. Yeah, this is an old German company. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's on there. It's good, so I had to adjust it a little bit. Yeah. A little narrow. One more nut. This is, uh, I'm sure one of the German guys will chime in. Yeah, what is it? Is it got a label on it, so? 
It's the E L E or I'm not sure what that well, company. There's guys out there that know all those brands. Yeah, made in Western Germany. Wow, that's exciting to see that muffler go back on there. It really starts to come together when you put the heads on. Yeah, we're going downhill now, and you know we had some issues, but we overcame them. And uh, we'll get this one done and move on to the next one, man. I'm looking forward to doing more projects. I got plenty of projects. Yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna be doing some welding next, I guess. That'd be nice. So the J-tubes are on, the exhaust is on. Here we go. Man. Here we go. Pretty. I had to get these studs in stainless steel. Really? Pretty nice though. Nice. How many engines do you think you've rebuilt? Uh, I've built about 600 wow. since I left Sears. I've cut track of. Forks are good on the nut side. All right, so we got this little. Yep, basically, let me show you how it goes. You're going to pull this like this. And you want to place your clamp like so. You OK. You want to capture that metal piece and just lip on the muffler. Yep. I'm going to bring that over. Like that, and you want to make sure, in case Scooter's watching, that these are straight and the bolts are symmetrical, not tightened on one side. And, gotcha. Uh, equal length. Let's tighten them up. I'll give you my tools when I'm done. You ready to tighten yours up? Yeah, buddy. downtown before you know it man you caught that Volkswagen I didn't tell you about it that was pretty slick what's that in your edit oh yeah did you see that it's like he saw that I think he did <laughs> yeah I saw it. I was like man that was so cool yeah I didn't tell you it was in there she's like did you tell him that was in there I'm like no I never saw it so we want to try to get the same amount of yeah, you know, depth on both you sides look all janky, you know? right there's a, there's a little bit of art for, art to this, I think. Well, mm. it's respecting the motor, you know? You know, it looks look like they presented it when it was original, you know? As best you can. Right. Clean, proper hardware. You just people look at it and they, you know, get the impression that you care. There's a lot of people that do this that don't, you know? Anytime you can make it nice and you have the ability to do so, you should do it. How's that look? It's looking fantastic, man. Tighten her down. All right. All right. I think we're pretty good there. That right, looks good, man. Nice awesome. work. All right, we're going to put the oil sanding unit in. Don't ever use Teflon tape okay. on a Volkswagen case. All right. Okay. So you can use the uh, liquid Teflon. That's good. All right, don't use Teflon tape? No, I try not to. I mean, it's personal preference. But some people do? Yeah, and some people break the case right here. And uh, not so critical on a magnesium case like this. Yeah. But if you're used to using Teflon tape on a magnesium case and you do it on an aluminum case, it's going to break. I guarantee it. Okay. 
and I've had it happen to good friends, and it's just better practice to get the, the liquid Teflon. So this is liquid Teflon? Yeah. Okay. It doesn't exaggerate the torque, so you know, you're not over tightening the, the cinder. Gotcha. You just get it snug? Yeah, tighten it a little bit. It's adjustable. Adjustable. So there's no torques back, you just get it no, snug? Just get it tight. You know, you don't want to get it over tight. Right. right there. Good. You know, it didn't stop. I stopped. Yeah. You could, you could go tighter and break it, but you know, it's right. tight enough. So get it know. nice and snug. Yep. That's all you need. So next is our cylinder tin. Well, I'd just like to actually bolt the uh, oil cooler over here. Is the oil cooler clean, or do we need to wash that, or is it ready to go? I did spray it out with some brake clean a couple times, but okay. we might want to hit it one more time. Uh, your standards are probably a lot higher than mine. I'll just blow it out real good because the my safety clean so dirty. I don't have any brake clean. Or, uh, oh, brake. Yeah, I sprayed the hell out of it pretty yeah. good. We'll give it a good shot of air. There was a lot of junk that came we out of it. Just want to make sure it's not dirty. Uh, I normally. Pretty clean. Yeah, I cleaned it pretty good. So the kit comes with a few different types. These are the ones that we need. Yep. Those are generally the ones for this case. So Darren was saying he usually re just replaces the oil cooler with a new one, but... Yeah, they're pretty available now, and they come way down in price. Yep. And it's just good peace of mind. This one's super clean, but if you have any kind of engine failure, it's not worth trying to clean it up and use it on a new motor. You know, it's better just to go ahead and start with a new one. Right. This motor never ran, so there's no debris in it as far as engine debris. Commented about the locking nuts melting, which won't happen. They don't get hot enough. Uh, I wouldn't use it on the exhaust, but the case never gets that hot. Right. So you should be fine with a lock nut. We've used them for years. I've never seen one melt, but if they do, it'd be an indication that the motor's not tuned properly. Yeah, I was pretty impressed with your temperature gauge in your bus. It's running at, what was it running at? Uh, max cylinder head temperature usually is around 200 degrees. Wow. But it's got a little, you know, some tricks with the camshaft in there. And uh, I didn't come up with it on my own. I had some help. Yeah. And a uh, guy in California reached out to me. It's no longer around anymore, but hooked me up with the right combination of parts. And really worked good and he taught me a little bit about how to reduce the cylinder head temperature that's awesome man so, very cool that's the problem if you're you know have Volkswagens it's one of the things you battle right cylinder head temp so we're going with a flat washer and a spring on here spring washer first flat first spring washer then the nut this is the flat one yeah the new one's the spring washer the shiny <laughs> one goes under the nut okay Ooh, that is tight, boy. <laughs> it wasn't just me. <laughs> I have to do it backhanded. I have to stand next to the motor and do it like with my back to the engine. Yeah, that's a... Let's <laughs> see, so you got to put all three on at the same time is the trick, right? Mm-hmm. Sounds like you got it. Oh, boy. 
Don't jinx me. That, uh, there we go. Part three coming soon. <laughs> no, no part three. It took me a lot longer than it did, yeah. Oh, that, that uh, bolt's a little crusty. Yeah, we get another nut? No, I just need a wrench. Okay, here. What size is it? Ten. Ten? Gotta get this thing done. Yep. We gotta do some body work. Yeah, we gotta weld some panels down. Kind of get it on one piece. Just get it nice and snug. Do, uh, you know, one, do both sides evenly. Just snug them down. You don't want to break the ears off, but just snug. You know? Nice and snug. Yep. Okay. Okay. Beautiful. Good. All right, man. Go ahead and grab your ten over there and put it on next. All right. This one here. Yep. Okay. things look nice. You are there, man. You got one chance to make it right, Matt. <laughs> Don't drop it in the fork. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, that would not be good. <laughs> I'm going to pull the head off this point. Mm. You need a port plug. Yeah, we're going to put the intake on in a minute. This is pretty exciting. You know, it's one of those things you'd love to be able to do it, you know, do it by yourself, but it's honestly, it's fun building with somebody else, especially if somebody knows what they're doing. Yeah. 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 You know, if somebody's willing to teach, I'm willing to listen, man. Seem very passionate about it. So yeah, you know, absolutely. Waste of time, so it's just a good time for everybody. This is cool. All right, man. We're gonna uh, go ahead and do the distributor ride here next. So you okay. Uh, hold the camera. I'm yes, sir. Do... All right, what are we doing now? Okay, we're gonna touch on the distributor drive here a little bit. I, I read through the comments on the uh, video, and I saw a couple people ask why that didn't get put in. Some people put the distributor drive in. And some people build it, they learn how to assemble it as they're assembling the case. They'll assemble this side, they'll lay the drive gear in there, the crankshaft, and they'll have the distributor bolted in the motor. Yep. Uh, I know JC does it like that, but I've never learned like that. So uh, I'm not saying that's the wrong way or the right way. I right. just learned how to do it this way. There's more ways, more, more right. than one way to do it. So this is the way that I was taught. Yep. And uh, it's just the way that I'm comfortable with. Okay. Not that I wouldn't. Do it the other way. We'll be open to try it, but I tend to put the distributor in a little later in the build. But like that's I just said, how you know how to do it. I think there's a really wrong way or a right way. That's well, if you know what you're doing, you're comfortable with it. Yeah, why, I've you never know. dropped the washer yet, but that, that's the, that's the fear. You know, you're dropping the washer. Gotcha. So we're gonna get this on TDC, which is back here. Okay, on number one. And what is, how do we know we're on number one? Uh, number one cylinder here, I'm going to look at the rockers. Both yep. of them are static, okay? So okay. That's on the back side of the cam. These are ready to adjust, so that's number one. All right. All right, so now we're going to take your distributor. Very nicely restored distributor here. Yep. Old school. 
And we're gonna take the cap off. Yeah, the guys over at Vintage Works uh, restored that for me. The carburetor and move over to the bench. So now we're going to orientate the distributor the way we want it to be in the motor. So this is in a vacuum. This is a vacuum advanced motor. The vacuum advance should be somewhere over here. Okay. You know? So we're going to establish where the distributor goes. This is the orientation we want the vacuum canister to be in. So now we're going to mark number one. Uh, the O9s have a little mark on them, you know, they'll have a little notch in the distributor. This doesn't seem to have that. Yeah, it does. It's yeah. hard to see. Okay. I remember, I remember seeing see it. see if we can find that little uh, notch. Yep, that's the notch. Where do you see the number one at? And then there's a one right there. Oh, sweet. Okay. He's see it? Yeah, he's marked it then. Okay, yeah. So that's where we want our number one to be. So now we're going to get our drive gear next. So on the bench over here. Yep. I'm gonna take the spring out that goes in last. But now we're gonna pull the distributor out. So you just kind of put it where you want it. And you figured out where you need it to be. Now we're gonna take the drive gear and we're gonna put it on here. Did we put the little spring in there? Nope, not yet. Okay. Not yet, my friend. So this is the orientation I need to install my drive gear in, okay? Okay. So now I take this out, set this here. Okay. Okay. You see how it's got a big side and a short side? This is more of a circle than this side. Yeah, it's like two half moons, one's right. smaller than the right. other. Okay, yep. so our bigger half moon is going to go to the top. I have to grab some pliers, so just remember that. And our orientation is almost to the fuel pump stud. Right. Okay, we line this line up. All right, next we got our washers. These are the two shims that go on the bottom of the drive gear. Okay. So these will go right here. And what these do is they keep the drive gear from having too much bump going up and down. And so, those were in there originally. Right. So you just got to make sure you keep... usually two of them or one big one. Okay. So our drive gear, got our uh, shims there. Now we need the magic screwdriver. This is the magic screwdriver. You got to have a screwdriver long enough to get down in here. Okay. To contain your washers. Gotcha. Okay. And if you look down in this hole, let me get my flashlight. So you can see what's going on down here. And you look down in that hole, you'll see there's like a little ledge where yep. the shims sit. Yep. You see where it's machined down there? Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna put my screwdriver in between that with the shims on the screwdriver. So okay. an idea of what's going on. First, we're gonna take some oil. And we're gonna put some oil down in this hole. And the other thing we're gonna do first is we're gonna orientate this where the hole is flat like so gotcha okay now we're gonna put a little oil in and i know you guys are thinking man it's much easier to put it in as you're building the motor right it's, it's just, just the way you know how to do it right it's just a little more comfortable for me to do it this way yeah but i suggest Whatever is the most comfortable for you is how you should put it in. And if you're beginning and you have uh, never done this before, it would probably be a smarter idea to do it the other way and assemble it in the case first. Gotcha. So. All right, so now we're gonna, this is the scary part. <laughs> oh geez, <laughs> they're good to screws right. or the washers. So now they're down in there, my flashlight. And then I put my shim in here and I line them up. And there you go, the shims are in. Okay? Yep. All right, now the drive gear goes in. There they are. Drive gear pliers. Nice. 
nice. So I already got the gear in my hand there. So this oh. is the distributor drive gear. Right. You got these awesome pliers. Now, this is going to want to turn a little bit as you put it in. So you want to come a little past where you want it. Okay. Gotcha. So as it goes down, it turns with the threads. Right, as it engages in the gear. Yep. So now, spring's next. Cool. Drive gear's installed. That wasn't too much drama. No. So that's pretty much how that's I do it. it. And now we're going to put the distributor in next. I'm going to lube this O-ring up because it's nice and tight. Lube it up a little bit. Yeah, it's brand new, so it's really tight. Yeah. She's tight in there. Oh, yeah. Real tight. Awesome. So here we go. Number one, distributor is where it's supposed to be. Number one's right there. So we got the distributor in. Yep. We got plenty of adjustment. We got our vacuum advance where it goes. Yep. Here's our number one hole, we'll right on number one, and then we have plenty of sweep both ways for retard and advance. Okay. So there cool. we go. That's that. We'll put a nut and a washer on that and bolt that down. And then next is the fuel pump.